Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. When animating in 3D, there are five steps I believe that one should follow to get a good result. These can apply to game animation and 2D animation. Let's check them out. As an example, I'm gonna use my Kibali intro animation I made a few months ago. If you'd like a detailed breakdown of this animation, please let me know in the comment section below. The first step is planning and preparing references. Now you can keep it very simple, writing a few words down as I did for my animation. You don't need to create a whole script. This is the final note when I was thinking of this animation. I would send myself emails at night not, not to lose the idea in the morning. I also added my main source of inspiration, all Overwatch characters' intro animations. From there, I gathered some references from Motion Actor Inc. and this specific move from Street of Rage 4. I love this game. Once you have all of these done, you can edit your references if you want, check out this video about it, or start animating. I would recommend you to stick to the idea you wrote down to prevent you from overextending, adding too many ideas and never finish your animation. The next step is one of my favorite. It's the blocking stage. And this is where you can get really creative. You can be creative during the next stage, but the further down the animation process, the more labor it's gonna cost you to add more ideas. Blocking is all about creating your key poses the one that tells what's happening in your animation. At this stage, you don't really need to care about timing at first. Just make sure that each of your poses are appealing and we understand the flow of your animation, a bit like a storyboard. The important poses are contact poses, the moment your character touches or leaves the ground, and your key poses, the one you could describe in a few words. For example, my character stares at the camera with an heroic pose. He does a spinning kick. He's preparing for a staff attack. He attacks. He jumps. He lands performing an axe kick, etc. For this project, I also blocked the camera animation at the same time. It can be a little trickier because you have to foresee your camera behavior. But I guess with a bit of experience, it's totally doable. And it's also the way I wanted to do it for this specific animation. At this stage, I keep both my character and the camera animation in stepped interpolation or constant interpolation. In the industry, most of the time, animating to the camera goes through more steps. Storyboarding, animatic, previs, and then blocking. With previs, you focus more on rhythm and camera framing, making sure your base composition works and the camera motion feels natural and interesting. You can use primitives to do that, or use your character rig without caring about the poses. The environment can be built later on, but you need to make sure that we can understand a sense of composition in space. I used rows of cubes for that. Once my blocking is done, I may do a rough timing pass to get a first sense of resin. Talking about composition and camera work, I wanted to let you know that Martin from CG Boost just release a new course about cinematic shots and it's really amazing. From composition, color, contrast and levels theory, camera work and a lot more. I've already watched a good half of it and as always with CG Boost and Martin, the quality of content and the editing are above all. While it's made in Blender, I believe this course can be taken by any 3D and 2D artist as the software doesn't really matter here. I'm affiliated to CG Boost, but if you know me and my channel, you know that I only promote content I use and found valuable personally. And this course is becoming a reference for me. The next step is what we call Detailed Blocking or Blocking Plus. This is really where your animation starts to shine. And it's also where you need to spend as much time as possible. You need to create your breakdowns, additional poses that tell you how you get from one key pose to another. And then you can create breakdowns of these breakdowns. It's also the moment to better define your timing. 
I generally work by chunks, and as I add more pauses to an animation bit, I will move my keys to change the pace and rhythm. You want to refine your arcs using the motion path, for example. You can check this tutorial about it. You want to add supporting poses to define your easing. You can start introducing smears if they match your style to better connect fast poses. And you may add overshoots to communicate weight. Basically, you can call your detail blocking done when you have defined everything that is happening in your animation. If you have a doubt between two frames, then build a new pose. And whenever you're asking yourself if you have enough poses, the answer is no. If you want detailed lessons about Blender's animation tool, about good posing, good blocking, staging, basically everything about animation, check out my animation course alive on p2designacademy.com. The next step is the cursed step. I mean the splining stage. Your animation may look snappy and dynamic in stepped, but we now need to move to spline, letting the computer create the missing frames with busy interpolations. And it moves everything to a point where you lose a lot of impact and your animation looks like shit. Well, this is time to dive into the graph editor and push the curves to bring back contrast in your motion. Exaggerate your easings, exaggerate your overshoot, fix your smears, etc. So basically fixing your animation to get the feeling you had when your blocking was finished. It's a lot of labor and I think it's the stage most animators hate. I advise you to start with the center of gravity of your character. It's often the main torso or hips controller. Then work on the contacts, generally the feet. From there you can refine the hierarchy of the spine to the head and then the arms. The final stage is the polishing stage. You're 95% done with your animation, but it can be a little better. It's generally a step that takes a lot of time for a small benefit. And this is often where you can spot higher and lower budget animations, like comparing a feature film to a kid show, for example. It's time to watch your animation frame by frame and fix any glitches, any collision that doesn't feel right. Push your character's expression, polish your secondary motions like clothes, hairs, toes, bring some fleshiness to your character, and maybe remove things that doesn't work. Again, it's a lot of work, but as a final advice, I believe you should give that love to your personal and portfolio animations, because you are not on a budget, and this might make the difference between a good and a great animation, this might lend you a job or give your work more attention, because it shows how committed you are. And if you're really happy with your shot, don't hesitate to give it a proper background, lightning, VFX, some sound design, and don't hesitate to reach out to other artists to do a collab. Look at this amazing piece from Vikram Greville. And how badass it looks with these amazing VFX made by Salvador Avila. That's a great way to make your animation stand out even more and to start networking. With that being said, this is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you very, very soon.